Nearly 100 degrees in Arlington, Texas today for WNBA action featuring two of the hottest players in the league. Links forward to Fisa Collier was named 2019 Rookie of the Year. Tuesday night, she poured in a career-high 27 versus Chicago. Dallas Wings guard Arike Ogumawale was the runner-up to Collier in 2019 and has proven a pension for the dramatic. Ogumawale with two, throws it up, and three goes! Ogumawale and Collier look to settle the score tonight. Welcome to the College Park Center. Tonight, the Minnesota Lynx take on the surging Dallas Wings, winners of three of their last four. Hello again, everybody, along with former WNBA player and current TCU head women's basketball coach Reagan Beebley. I'm Ron Thulin. The Wings numbers have improved, but what doesn't show up in the stats is their attitude. Head coach Vicki Johnson telling us she believes that every time they walk on the court and the players believe, they will win. Well, if you know Vicki Johnson, you know that she means what she says. Her teams are always going to work hard. They'll buy into her vision, and that's going to make them confident. A player that's playing really confident right now for the Dallas Wings is Satu Sabali. She's traded in those Duck Wings for Pegasus Wings, and let me tell you what, she is soaring to new heights. Her ability to shoot threes, penetrate down the lane, We've called her the unicorn before, no doubt she is. Now talk about the OG unicorn, Sylvia Fowles. Don't at me, but she's the best center to ever put on a W jersey. Her inside presence on the offensive end matches that defensive presence on the defensive end. Sylvia Fowles has come to play. Minnesota Wings looking for their first road victory. Let's take a look at the starting lineups now. Minnesota out of two starters because of injury, including former Dallas Wing Ariel Powers and Natalie Achenwa. They still have the firepower, obviously, with Nafisa Collier. And for the Dallas Wings, look at their starting lineups. And Marina Mabry, who started six games and averaged over 21 points a game as a starter, has been off the bench the last four games. She moves back into the starting lineup. Alicia Gray comes off the bench. But, you know, Marina Mabry was just outstanding as a starter. She's one of those players that it doesn't matter if I start. I just want to help the team. Yeah, well, I think not only does she perform really well as a starter, but she also helps some of her teammates play pretty well as starters. We know about the Marike connection and how strong that is. And why not start the game off as strong as you can? And there's the head coach of Minnesota, Cheryl Reeve. And what a job she did last year was the WNBA's coach of the year her third time she has gotten that award fifth most wins she's looking for number 250 as far as wins are concerned at Minnesota and she did an outstanding job last season putting this team together but she said at the beginning of this year she broke training camp and just didn't have that confidence yeah she knows what it's supposed to feel like and it didn't feel the way she knows it needs to and there is Vicki Johnson in her first year as head coach of the Dallas Wings, played in the first ever WNBA game when she was with New York. She has made these players take ownership in everything they do, from offense to defense. It's a part of the formula for success is that accountability and ownership. And I think what Vicki Johnson does really well is she's clear with her team on their roles. Our officials tonight, Eric Bruton, Tim Green, and Jenna Renault. And we are set. Wings coming off that five-game, 11-game road trip. Vicki Johnson telling us this week, it built a sisterhood and a foundation during that time. That's exactly what you want your practices to do, your training camp. It's going to help you create that chemistry. But chemistry isn't chemistry if it doesn't create the synergy it produces on the floor for you. Outstanding crowd on hand tonight. Minnesota will have the basketball still. Minnesota coming in with a record of four and six. Start of the year 0-4, then got Nafisa Collier back. She had to miss a couple of games because she was overseas. Got her legs back underneath her and started to roll, then lost Tuesday to Chicago. Had problems with turnovers. Inside, Bridget Carton, former Iowa State Cyclone. Well, to that point, Ron, I think it's something important to remember is this Minnesota Lynx team only has five players that's actually played in all ten games so right. far. And it's hard to create that chemistry and synergy and, and momentum when you have that kind of turnover. 
Dallas swings with a record of five and six. All their losses have been by single digits. Shot clock at three. Has to give it up. Jefferson lost it. Carlton comes up with it. Cheryl Reed has to be happy with that defensive possession to start the game. Carlton can shoot the three. Took one in the face from Satu Sabali. Well, Satu Sabali is sprinting out at a player like Bridget Carlton because Bridget can hit those threes with great efficiency. But the thing you have to be careful of is she's also, and I think more potent when she puts the ball on the floor. Sounds like you played against her. Uh, maybe a few times. <laughs> Three on the way, nothing but the bottom of the net for, for Kayla McBride. 57% of her shots are from beyond the arc. You can't leave her alone. Well, Kayla McBride came to Minnesota to help increase the advantage and effectiveness from the three-point line for this Minnesota team. When you have a player like Sill inside, mm -hmm. she doesn't do you as much good if you don't have people on the perimeter who can score, just like we see Lasia Clarendon attack the scene right there. What a job Clarendon has done for this Minnesota Lynx team. She signed with them, started the year with them, was waived, came right back within 24 hours. And Cheryl Reeves said the leadership, she didn't realize how big of a leader she was and the Wings get their first basket in the ballgame. I think one of the things that you start to notice as you really put a microscope on Lasia Clarendon is her value in communication. She knows her voice, and we'll talk about later how that extends off the court, but she's willing to use it, and she didn't wait to find her way into a leadership role. She went ahead and took it. Collier tried to knock it off McBride wasn't able to do it one of the keys for Minnesota coming into this game was starting fast they did not start fast in that game against Chicago and for Vicki Johnson one of her keys pace they need to control the pace of this ball game if anybody out there watched Minnesota play against Chicago <laughs> you will wow. remember Cheryl Reeve on that sideline to open the half or the quarter yelling at her team saying we've given up 16 points in the first four minutes and just as she finished that sentence they gave up another three that's going to be a blocking foul on carlton let's take a look at your keys to the game coach well let's talk first about the wings keys and how important it is that they turn over this minnesota team they had 20 turnovers in the last game that created 32 points for chicago and they also have to account for cheryl reeve on that sideline now i don't want to play against the cheryl reeve team after no. a loss like that she'll have them ready as we see sill take it in and just get them for sure two points <laughs> but the Lynx need to find that offensive mojo we've talked about the turnovers they're 10th in the league right now at three-point percentage and they also need to value guarding one-on-one -on -one. watching their defense they give up driving lanes so quickly and they don't take a lot of pride they haven't taken a lot of pride in that one-on-one -on -one defense that's going to be a loose ball foul on Marina Mabry we saw the defense of Minnesota how they extended it but People don't talk about Sylvia Fowles. She right now leads the league in steals per game. She's one steal away from moving into sixth all time. We talk about her shot blocking and her scoring, but nobody talks about her steals. Listen, I think we will talk about There you go. Her. We can't control what everybody else has done, but you're sure as heck going to hear me talk about her because I think she, as I said in the open, is the best to play this position when you consider both ends of the floor. Love that matchup with Collier and Satu Sabali, two outstanding young players. Arike gives it up. Collier from 17. Wings cannot buy a basket here in the early going. Just one of four. You have to believe this is the start that Cheryl Reeve has been oh, talking yeah. to her team about since the second that game against Chicago got over. I'm sure this Minnesota team wished they had back-to-back -back games exactly. <laughs> after that game so they could just get right back out on the court and not have to go into practice with Cheryl Reeve after that performance. Of course, last year they lost in the semifinals to Seattle, the WNBA playoffs. Clarenton left wide open, can't get it. Fouls right into her hands. She's two for two, and she leads the WNBA in field goal percentage. When you get shot opportunities that close to the rim, you're going to see that kind of efficiency. And Charlie Collier can't let herself get pushed so deep under the rim in positions like that. 
6-17 left in the opening quarter. Sylvia Fowles already with four points in the ball game and a couple of rebounds. Did five of their ten shots. They lead by nine. Of course, Juneteenth will be this Saturday. The Wings will be honoring that, but the celebration started tonight. Players opting to wear Black Lives Matter shirts. And also, they played the Black National Anthem prior to the game, Reagan. Yeah, it was beautiful, and we're going to get a chance to hear some of that. But the WNBA set the standard as a league in representing the passions of its athletes. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. And you commented as this uh, young lady was singing how beautiful that was. Yeah, I mean, some of these lyrics, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with harmonies of liberty. It's a beautiful prayer, really. Right. And uh, great job by the Dallas Wings to make sure that the Black National Anthem was a part of this night. Well, Vicki Johnson does a lot. She makes substitutions about four minutes into the game. Alicia Gray, Ty Harris, Bella Allery all have checked into the lineup. Collier and Mabry taking a seat. Same starting five for Minnesota. Again, only nine players available. Arike, no. Carlton, the board. I don't think many people thought that Bridget Carlton was going to come into the league and have such an impact as a scorer and right. she's also i've got to tip my hat to her she's doing a really good job i think of adapting her defense she came from a program that pro played primarily sag off zone type defenses and she's had to adapt her game quite a bit and i have to give her so much credit for how she's developed coached by bill finley up at iowa state the dean of the big 12 coaches and kayla thornton checks into the lineup and Enrique is going to take a seat. And that's something that kind of shocked us in the last game against Las Vegas. She sat down in the final couple of minutes of the game during crunch time. And just talking to the players and coaching staff, it was kind of a learning experience. Well, you got to keep learning in this game. And right. I'm telling you, I think Dallas right now is learning how to open games. That's been an area of inconsistency for them and how they're going to start out quarters, but definitely how they're going to start out games. These starts are so important that for a, a younger team, and I know they don't like being called a young team, but right. that they have stronger starts on both ends of the floor. More efficient offense, making things harder for teams on the defensive end. Gray got it off. No, they're going to say shot clock violation. Caleb Thornton thought she got the pass off and the shot off in time. Demiris Dantas, by the way, has checked into the lineup for Minnesota. She is the big-time three-point threat 56 percent of her shots from beyond the arc i love to watch demiris oh, Dantes play she's one of those players that i think just continues to show the evolution of the game as we see kt with the big steal and the finish that's how dallas needs to play they are so good nearly unstoppable when they can get these high turnovers into the open court three double doubles already this season for kayla thornton told us yesterday she'll do whatever it a true team player. Harris tips it to herself. Here comes Ty Harris, second year pro out of North Carolina. Izzy Harris also has checked into the lineup. Inside Bella Allery. Great pass from Sobley to Bella Allery. Now, I want to say for sure that pass was on purpose. I couldn't tell if it was something that just kind of bobbled out of her hands and into the hands of Bella Allery or if it was just that special. Let's count on it being that special because that's what Satu Sabali is. And that makes it a 13 to 6 lead by Minnesota. They are shooting 43%. The wings at 38% here in the early going. The bench has been so productive for the wings this season. It's something that they rely on. They want to get their 30 points off the bench. This is a team that can go 12 deep. Shot clock at three. Ty Harris offensive foul. So that, now again, Dallas is a team that is really trying to work on an identity of defense. And they like to get out onto the wings and deny reversals. When you do that, you break up team's flow. They can't get into some of their additional screening action. And it really manipulates the offense. And so great job by KT buying into that element of their defense. And Crystal Dangerfield has checked into the lineup. Number two, the second year pro out of UConn. Rookie of the year last season. Now coming off the bench. 
told me today earlier that she doesn't mind it. She watches the game the first couple of minutes and kind of gets a feel. There's Carlton. High bounce, rebounded by Gray. Gray pushing, floating. That's what Alicia Gray does. She draws the contact with a lot of aggressiveness. Alicia Gray's first game of the season this year was at L.A., and the majority of her points came off of the defense into transition. In situations like these, she has space. She can get to her strong hand. Defense is in a situation where they're having to make quick decisions. That's when Alicia Gray is at her best, and there's been a little bit of controversy right. about her minutes. She didn't play a, a consistent minutes, and... and Vicki Johnson said, look, she's trying to find her way after playing so much three-on-three -three basketball. Exactly. And, again, I, I've heard all the controversies about it. But, honestly, I think what Vicki Johnson was trying to do is take some pressure off Alicia Gray that she has to come in and produce right away. Is he here? Her, sorry, giving her time to be able to adjust. I agree. At nine minutes and 46 seconds, she played against Las Vegas. But she also has been struggling with her shot. Rachel Bantam can't get it to go. And that is something Alicia Gray has got to grow in, in her consistency. Exactly. In her time in the WNBA, she's been so productive. But she's got to grow in that consistency and just her catch-and-shoot game. Thornton out front. A lot of pressure. Gray with seven to shoot. Gray from the corner buries the two. It's a great look for Alicia Gray. It's off of a closeout read. She found a little escape dribble into an empty pocket. Nice uncontested shot. Those are going to be her highest percentage. You know, you talk to Alicia Gray, she holds herself to a higher standard than anybody. Bella Allery. How about Brittany Griner, Liz Cambage, now Sylvia Fowles, the last three opponents she had to go up against. And again from the outside. Ty Harris knocking it down, and the wings pull within one. This is the depth that you talked about, Ron, the depth of Dallas. This is a team that has relied heavily upon it, and in their best games, in their wins, their bench outproduces their opponent's bench by twice the numbers. For the last five games, the Dallas bench has scored at least 30 points. They average on the year 26.3. Dallas on a 10-2 run. Here's this play here for Dallas where again just quick ball movement reading defense reading that little gap Alicia Gray just the one little dribble into that elbow area collapsed the defender and wide open three want to take a quick look at the upcoming national TV schedule for the WCBS SN coming up next after this game we'll have the New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces get underway at 10 o'clock Eastern time and then CBS Sports Network tomorrow night, Phoenix Mercury at the Sparks. And that'll tip off at 10.30 Eastern time. And then on CBS Saturday, Connecticut Sun at the Chicago Sky. That'll get underway at 2 o'clock. And we have a second. Want to wish our best to Kurt Miller. Uh, had to leave the team for some health reasons for a family member. And you were on Kurt's staff, with Kurt on staff at Colorado State. Kurt, we wish you the very best, my friend. Absolutely. And he's a, he's a family man. His family, oh, his yeah. parents are everything to Kurt. And we're thinking, you, thinking of you and keeping our prayers uh, headed your way. Brandy Poole taking over as the interim head coach tonight. And they're still in the first quarter with Chicago and Connecticut trailing 10-9 to in that game. We'll keep you posted on all the WNBA scores throughout the evening. And here is Dangerfield. Now listen, Dallas right now, their starters only have two points, while their bench have the remaining of their points as we see Dallas finish that defensive possession with a foul on McBride. But here's the thing about Dallas. Marike, <laughs> they make up for 42% of the team's field goal attempts. And they make 30% of those. They're not the most efficient between the two of them. So these additional scores really have to show up consistently as efficient scores for Dallas. And we see that out of Asatu. I think Alicia Gray can get there. And obviously KT, I think, is one of those players, as well as Izzy, that needs to show up every game for this team being efficient. 
at the line McBride number one of the WNBA and free throw percentage before you start tweeting we mispronounced a name that's our name for Marina Mabry and Arike Ogabawale Marike Marike that's Marike. right it, it's catching on I, yeah. I don't gonna, know get a dance and a drink for it you know <laughs> yeah I should have maybe copyrighted it I, maybe somebody else <laughs> said it before I did though Ball away shot won't go down for Izzy Harrison Danger feels so quick on the outside. That's going to be a kick ball. You know, talking to Crystal Dangerfield today, she had such a great attitude. I mean, here she is, the rookie of the year last season. Last year, she averaged over 16 points a ball game, shot 47%. Her numbers are down. But she knows what her role is, and it's energy. Yeah, this is a woman that gets rookie of the year as a second round draft pick, and she didn't let that define her impact. So she sure is not going to allow coming off the bench to impact her game as Rachel Bannum. I'm loving me some Rachel Bannum you. lately. She is saucy. Coming into this game, the last four contests, she was 11 of 13 from three. Ah. Izzy Harrison, and the foul is going to be called probably on Sylvia Fowles. You know, I, that always amazes me. I know it has to frustrate you as a coach at TCU, but you have a player, 62%, like Rachel Bannum, shots from beyond the arc, but yet you give her a lot of space. It has to drive you crazy. It's Yeah, but you got to understand, too, how did she get that space? What created it for her? And, again, good off-ball movement, good penetration into the paint. And I think when you have a player on the floor, like Sylvia Fowles on the interior, Dantas, who sh can shoot the three, McBride, you have to make some cho tough choices. So, obviously, they decided to leave Bantam open. Izzy Harrison in her fifth year. What a game she had in the Wings' last contest versus Las Vegas. 13 points, 9 rebounds, but the tip balls, the energy, and the defense she played really stood out. And Alicia Gray will be whistled for the foul. Since both of these teams are in the West, this is a Commissioner's Cup game tonight. And of course, everybody wants to win those games. Well, big reason why is $500,000 yeah. is up for grabs in those games. And the West Cup standings look like this. Storm just keep on rolling. 5-0. and oh. Aces at 3-1. and one. You see the wings and the links behind them. Boy, They're, Seattle is just smoking. They are. And they've... They're, there's two spaces, I think, right now that are pretty secure, clear, and it's the top and the bottom right now. Seattle at the top, and then Indiana Fever, unfortunately, at the bottom. Ty Harris again. What a spark off the bench. Halftime, we are going to introduce you a little bit deeper into Ty Harris, who Vicki Johnson told her at the beginning of the season, you're too relaxed for me. Yeah, she said, I need to see a little bit more juice out of you and intensity. And it's not that she's not good. She just needed to embrace the role she has as a point guard. Dantas from outside into the hands of Kayla Corton. Up ahead, nice pass. Izzy Harrison can't finish it out. Gray gets it. Leans into it. Can't get it. Tipped by Harrison. Fouls comes down with it. Those are frustrating plays oh. for teams because everyone in the arena saw Izzy open. I think KT was the last one to see her open. Found a way to get it to her, though. That'll be a shot clock violation, or I should say the end of the quarter. Tried to get the shot up before Shell Reef coaching her team up. But the Dallas Wings were down early in this ballgame, trailing by as many as nine. But at the end of the first, they're only down by four. begun my friends for the AT&T WNBA All-Star 2021 game in Las Vegas that'll be July the 14th it's going to be a unique format the WNBA All-Stars will meet the USA national team and you can directly impact the encore competition by voting for up to 10 WNBA stars now that's four backcourt six front court you go to WNBA.com slash vote or pick up your All-Stars on WNBA app 
All-star selections will be conducted through a combination of voting by fans, players, and a national panel of sports writers and broadcasters. It'll be announced on June 30th. Vote now and every 24 hours through June 27th. Special note, by the way, this Sunday and next Sunday, now get this, they're two-for-one days when you can vote twice for your favorite players. That's the 17th WNBA All-Star Game broadcast live on ESPN July 14th, 7 p.m. My broadcast partner was going nuts during the commercial wanting to talk about this. Well, I just think it's awesome how creative this league is and how they look at what's being done in some other leagues and take the best parts of it. The USA Hockey Women's Team, they did this with the uh, Hockey Pro League exactly. where they competed against each other. It worked out really well. I think the voting is really great. The fans get 50% of the vote. Current players get 25% of the vote. Media get another 25. And then those extra days where your vote can count twice. It's just awesome to see the job that Kathy's doing as the president and the in just the creativity surrounding oh, it all. Kathy Engelbert has done a phenomenal job as commissioner of this league what they pulled off last year in the wobble phenomenal and they're continuing it allery tried to keep it alive and that's what she does so well those little things for the team ron here's the thing is as we see way too easy of a shot for a player like nafisa but what we're seeing and have always known about the WNBA is they did not have a product problem. They had a marketing problem. And I just think Kathy Engelbert has done a great job of solving that problem in collaboration with the players. I agree. By the way, that's Collier's first basket started out 0 for 4. Mabry looking for her first one. Can't get it to go into the hands of Laisha Clarendon. Ninth year pro out of Cal. She's a slasher, perimeter score, and disher to fouls for two. Fouls knows the best way to get your buckets is crash the board. Yeah, exactly. Get great positioning. Is he Harrison? Count the basket and she'll go to the line. Foul will be on fouls, and that'll be her second. Cheryl Reeve is challenging the official and saying that this was a clean block that, in fact, and she might have a decent yeah, case there that what Izzy did was swipe away the blocked hand. And I think if this were an NBA game, this would be one of those, let's review it. Mm -hmm. It's worth the potential loss of a timeout, but at least you're not getting a player like Fowles, her second foul. I know, you, in Minnesota can ill afford to have her out once again. Ariel Powers, former Dallas Wing, one of our favorite players, Ariel, we know you're watching. Heal quickly, that thumb surgery. Natalie Achunwa want to see you back on the court as quickly as possible. Boy fouls. Once she gets her position, forget about it. Payback. There's yeah, a little bit right. more to that phrase, but I'm not going to say it because we're on, a, on, on air. But Sylvia knows how to get her revenge. Yes. She does not give up space, period. I think Sylvia fouls would one of the many many things that are special about her it's her footwork before she gets catches she times up positioning you see her now challenging bella allery with her positioning but again the balance that you see is another reason why she's so efficient and effective in the paint here is arike has not hit a field goal attempt yet over three dallas is trailed by as many as nine two and a half gone by here in the second Clarendon just blows right around Ty Harris. Bella Allery made the decision to not come off Sylvia Fowles as that penetration was coming right at her, and she might have needed to have rethought that. Last year I asked Glacia to describe herself. She said feisty, and we've seen that tonight. He no doubt is feisty. There's no question Glacia Clarendon will commit to competing every single possession and that's why cheryl reeves said we needed her on this roster now the biggest lead now for minnesota and vicky johnson is going to want to talk about it dallas put together a 10-2 run in that first quarter and closed the gap but clarendon leading minnesota Minnesota on a 10-2 run or 10-3 run here in quarter number two. That's why they've opened up the 11-point lead, partly because of the play of this young lady. Lasia Clarendon 
recently was nominated for the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Award. And so much of the reason why is she's a great advocate for the LGBTQ plus community. Lasia it identifies as trans, non-binary. She and his wife are very open about how they're raising their child to be able to choose and define itself however it chooses. She's also been very vocal and open about the top surgery he went through recently. And I just am so thankful for the courage, the bravery, and the example that Lasia Clarendon is for all people. Well, in celebration of LGBTQ plus pride presented by Deloitte, the WNBA will collaborate with GLSEN and Fanatics on an exclusive line of pride apparel, including Fanatics branded WNBA t-shirts. All proceeds will benefit GLSEN. Fans can purchase the shirts at WNBAstore.nba.com. On the drive, can't get it. Rebound Thornton. Quick outlet up ahead to Sobley. Collier looks for position down low, but they'll set things up outside. Right now, I feel like Dallas is playing a little bit too much east-west instead of really attacking downhill. And you see Mo Jeff right there with that opportunity. That's a good shot. Those are good misses. They're reboundable misses if the offense is anticipating. Minnesota now out rebounding Dallas inside with a left hand, Collier. Those empty possessions for Dallas, whether it's turnovers, missed shots, are leading the easy buckets for a team like Minnesota. And Minnesota has proven this season to struggle guarding in the, or scoring in the half court. Bridget Carlton couldn't stop. Gray did. Gray hits. I would also want to mention Dallas is the number one rebounding team in the league this year. That is something that Greg Bibb, the president general manager, said they were going to address. They did, and it's come to fruition. Outside, Kayla McBride dropping the three. See how quick Minnesota's getting their shots off. They're not wasting much time at all. Even if it's off of a Dallas make, they're pushing it up the court, finding quick early buckets. Thornton knocks down the three. Get back to Kayla McBride. The last three games, she had one field goal made each. She was three to 17 during that span. She's two of three so far tonight. Both baskets made from beyond the arc. Whistle and a foul on the drive by Satu Sabali. I know Kayla McBride really quite, quite hasn't found that flow that we know right. she's capable of, but she was thrilled to be with Minnesota. She wanted to play for a Cheryl Reeve coach team. She knew her three-point shooting was going to be valued. She came from Vegas where that three-point shot, they only average in Vegas taking about seven threes, eight threes a game. And this is a player who wants to take five, six, seven threes a game. And if you're Vegas, you can't blame them. They've got a great interior presence there on that roster. This Minnesota team, they need a McBride out there getting McBuckets. Do you like that I one? I like that one. That's good. You had a couple of good ones already today. <laughs> We're going to keep score. Sylvia Fowles has checked back into the lineup. Once again, she is playing with two personal fouls. Little overload action that Minnesota runs to see if they can catch post defense fronting too high and too much. Dodgers trying to get it to Dangerfield, throws it away. Turnovers have been a problem for Minnesota and Cheryl Reeves so far this season. Average just over 16 turnovers a ball game. Last year, they were under 15. I think this is a good problem that Dallas has a lot of people in the arena. But I really do enjoy hearing Shell Reed yell at her team as <laughs> much as I enjoy seeing Mo Jeff get that easy inside out three. Brian Jefferson, her first field goal of the ball game. The floater. Oh, that's a pretty shot by Kayla McBride out of Notre Dame. Dallas is going to need to get this figured out, that they cannot saunter up the floor defensively because Minnesota has a short memory on if you score on them. Alicia Gray, no. Have we had a game this season so far where there wasn't a player from Notre Dame, not including the Wings, on the floor? It's like Notre Dame alumni weekend, every game we have. 
They do a great job getting players ready. And there was that stretch of time that Notre Dame was pumping out first round draft picks oh, yeah. right and left. Good defense by Charlie Collier just held her ground, putting up the hands on that 6 5 frame. Vicki Johnson telling Charlie Collier to come out front and set the pick. Gray stops, uses the glass, no. And Dangerfield kind of undercut Kayla Thornton a little bit. What else is she supposed to do? <laughs> That's all that Dangerfield can do. We're going to take a look right here at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see Dangerfield doing all that she can to try and make sure KT doesn't get it. And look, this kind of stuff happens all the time, but it doesn't get called all the time. Right. And you just hope if you're Dangerfield, maybe the ref gets distracted somewhere else. There you go. Dangerfield, five foot five, Alicia Gray. Coming alive with seven points here in the opening half so far. We knew know. she'd come back with a big game yeah, after Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know if Minnesota remembers that Alicia Gray is so good going to her left. Mm -hmm. Thornton doesn't like the call. I've yet to see a call that Thornton actually did like, unless it was when yeah. it's something exactly. like Dangerfield. But you're just going to see here Nafisa doing a great job going right into the body of her defender. And what Thornton needs to do in that situation is really get back into full front and get her hands off. If you show hands, easier call for the official. I think Cheryl Reeve thought that it was on the shot, not on the drive. Here's Planet Pearson to her right, former Dallas wing. What a coaching staff Cheryl Reeve has. I mean, you look at Planet Pearson, former Texas Tech Red Raider, former wing. And of course, you have the legendary Katie Smith. I can't say and Rebecca Brunson. About, I can't say enough about that staff. And I'll tell you what, they need to go ahead and have like the USA team go ahead and play against the Minnesota Lynx coaching staff. That'll prep them. Absolutely. Pass a little bit too strong. 241 left in the opening half. Dallas will have it. Alicia Gray has come alive. Yeah, Alicia Gray knows that people are talking about her, and she wants to go ahead and shut up any of that hate coming her way. And just her few minutes of play so far is already lighting up the scoreboard for the Minnesota Lynx. And she keeps it easy. She doesn't try to complicate things. She's an assist maker, a basket maker. And look, she knows right away when that ball's got a chance of coming into her. She's going to set her feet. She's going to position her defense. She's got eyes in the back of her head, knowing exactly where she's at. Her court sense is phenomenal. She really took over this team when they started out 0-4. Much better start here in the first half than the first quarter against Chicago the other night. Yeah, against Chicago, they gave up 39 points in the first quarter, and right now 37 with just two minutes to go in the half. Majority of Dallas scoring from their bench. Savali, no. Satu, one of two starters with only one field goal made. Mariah Jefferson, the other. They've got 24 of their 30 points have come from the wings bench. That's just been a consistency for Dallas is that Vicki Johnson's shown that she's willing to use her bench. She does it early, she does it often, and she's consistent with it. So I know she's changed her starting lineup. I think this was her seventh lineup that right. she's had so far in the season. But what players are going to know, if I come out of the starting lineup and go to the bench, I'm still going to have an opportunity to produce. Stay ready. Ty Harris is going to come in, and Vicki Johnson's philosophy is, while you're in there, that four, five, or six minutes, I want you to play till you're almost dead tired, and then you come out and get a break, almost like a hockey uh, change. I would say almost like Vicki Johnson when she played. Because, well, she, she never exactly, wanted to come out. Yeah, that's exactly how Vicki Johnson played, and whether she was in a New York Liberty uniform or a San Antonio Stars uniform, she was competing when her number was called. Biggest lead was 14 and is now down to five. Make it seven. Collier, nice shot. The Dallas Wings post defenders have got to do a better job of not allowing such deep touches for these post exactly. players for Minnesota. Final two minutes here in the opening, quarter, opening uh, half. 
Izzy Harrison can't finish. Second time she's had a point blank shot. Couldn't end up at the bottom of the basket. Thornton was looking for the pick. She goes underneath it, switches with fouls. Now Sobley picks up fouls. Great communication on these switches and rotations out of Dallas. Where did no offensive rebound? Fouls rolls it over the front of the rim. That is one of wow. the potential consequences of that kind of switching off the ball is that players that end up on a player like Fouls can almost forget how much you have to lock in on her. You forget almost who you're guarding specifically. You just know you're kind of guarding a space. And you're going to have to box Sylvia Fowles out and really be proactive with it. Kayla Thornton picking up her second personal foul. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, Reagan and I are going to take a look at the early uh, leading candidates for WNBA MVP. We've got some pretty good thoughts on that. Plus, we'll get to know Wings point guard Ty Harris. And we will break down the first 20 minutes of play with color pictures and numbers. You brought your set of crayons to the I game? Uh, I stole them from my <laughs> grandson, Jack. <laughs> uh, poor Jack. Yeah. 60 seconds left in the second. Clarendon likes that little pump fake, and she gets it to go. Clarendon with a half a dozen. It's just the consistency that he brings every single time down the, the down the floor the ability to make good decisions in the paint is something that point guards have got to have and Clarendon without question earns her paycheck there they're saying it's off the leg of Kayla Thornton now the officials come over and they change the call they knew it was off Sylvia Fowles watch it again there he hits her right off her foot little soccer action right there Gray will trigger it into Allery. Wings have 10 to shoot. Sobley in traffic. Goes one way, the other draws the contact and the foul, and she'll go to the line. I love this matchup that we get to see, and I know sometimes the switching, we don't get it every possession, right. but Nafisa Collier against Satu Sabali, that is a dream matchup right there. And we might get a chance to see that in July, not in WNBA uniforms, but in USA uniforms. But it, they're just very similar type of players that are going to continue to impact this league in big, huge ways. And Marina Mabry, who started the game after coming off the bench the previous four checks back into the lineup. Kayla Thornton is going to have to take a seat. She's got two fouls, and you don't want her in foul trouble. Wings have tw 12 players. Vicki Johnson not afraid to use every one of them, but basically they go 11 deep. Mabry has got to be in the running, if not leading the pack on most improved oh, player absolutely. in the league. And it might be one of the most productive trades in the league from 2020 to 2021. Got her for a second round pick. As a starter, she averaged 21.5 points a ball game, Marina Mabry did. Lynx will have it, 11 to shoot, 20.6 left in the half. Mabry's just one of those players. She can play on both ends of the floor, three to four positions, and it just makes her so valuable. Fouls working on Allery. Mabry got her hand, and they're poked it away. And that's Shock more of her value. Off. That's more, I'm sorry, Ron. That's more of her value is the IQ and understanding that you've got to go choke that ball out of Sill's hands. Harris over to Mabry for three. No. Ball's tipped, and that's the way the first half is going to come to an end. Minnesota led by as many as 14. They'll go to intermission up by 10. McBride with 12, fouls with 10. No players for the wings in double figures. Alicia Gray has seven points. Only eight points in the last two games coming into this contest. But Sylvia Fowles has made such a great impact in what she has done for this team. The entire year has been remarkable. And considering she only played against seven games last season because of injury. Well, I know that Sylvia Fowles has worked really hard to put her body in a position that she will not just be able to play in more games than last season, but she has intentions of fully on, full on seeing this team through the playoffs. And joining us now is Sylvia Fowles. Sylvia, first of all, congratulations so far <laughs> on an outstanding year. We've been talking a lot about this season. 
What kind of attitude did you come into this year after only playing seven last season? Um, my most important thing was uh, just to stay healthy. And then whatever the team needed. Uh, the team looked a little different this year, so my role kind of changed a little bit. Um, well, I don't need to score as much. We got scores around us, so my thing was how can I do different things, whether that's reground, get the flashes, get steals. And so that's my mindset for the rest of the year. Mama Sill, you got to <laughs> tell me, what have the last few days been for you guys? I know Cheryl Reeve got Cheryl, Cheryl Reeve had you ready for tonight. Uh, most definitely. Um, we dropped the ball at home against Chicago for whatever reason that was. But uh, we just want to make sure we come out and we be ready to play on the road because it's hard to win on the road. So I think our team started off very good. And so hopefully we can keep that up in the second half. All right, Sylvia, thanks so much. Thank Stay you. healthy, all right? Thank you. Sylvia Fowles, one of the true professionals and greats in WNBA. We're at halftime coming up on the other side of the break. We'll try to break down some possible MVP candidates. Sylvia Fowles and company up by 10 at intermission, 43-33. Hello again, along with TC women's basketball coach Reagan Peebley. I'm Ron Phillip. We mentioned going to the break that the wing starters aren't doing so hot. And they're also having some problems in the paint. Well, they've had a few different lineups, seven different lineups, including the one tonight. And they're not finding that beginning of the game flow that they need to. But the saving grace is they've got some scoring coming off the bench. Now, Minnesota's doing a great job, starters or bench, at scoring in the paint. They're finding it in transition off their defensive rebounding. But they're also finding Mama Sill inside. She is setting up easy buckets. The Fisa Collier is finding it in there as well. Dallas is going to have to find a better solution defensively for that paint. Uh, one of the bright spots, as we mentioned, has been the bench, especially the play of Alicia Gray. Played just under 10 minutes in their last contest, but she's come in with a different look in her eye tonight. Alicia Gray has so much going for her. She started off the season against L.A. just on fire, and then she had to go with the USA 3-on-3 three three team. But now we're seeing her starting to operate in some space a little bit better. She's taking advantage of defensive mistakes. But the best thing about her, I think, is just the intensity and the confidence in which she's playing with. And take a look at the numbers. What really stands out to you, Coach? Well, we talked about the difference in the points in the paint, 28 to 14. The field goal percentage is really a big reason why you see that difference is that po those points in the paint. You're going to need to see, I think, Dallas do a much better job on the defensive boards to try and get their way back into this game. Now we still have a second half of basketball left to be played. Dallas having to make up this deficit. Alicia Gray, though, she's made a point in that first half. As mentioned, she only had seven points in the previous two games, has really stood out in the first half. Let's see the enthusiasm that this Wings team comes out with. Once again, we talked at the beginning of the show, Vicki Johnson saying this team's got to take ownership in everything. It's got to be a point of pride. I bet you that was talked about during the intermission. You think? Yeah, I got a funny <laughs> feeling. Spend any time with VJ, you know what she what she thinks. Yeah, and that's what I think the team likes about her is oh, she's yeah. very clear. But the thing that's great about her is she is honest with that clarity. Arike still looking for her first field goal made 0 for 3 in the opening half. I think the other thing that DJ has going for her with this team is not only did she play in the game in, in this league, but she really understands how important, important, excuse me, how important her composure is. Collier just found the seam, made him pay. Jefferson out front. Same starting five that began the game for Dallas. Arike on the drive, scoop and the score, her first field goal in the ball game. A lot of decoy action in that offensive possession there, which really allowed Arike, who may be one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the W right now, to find that opportunity to attack. Kyle's cross-court pass, Bridget Carlton, no. Arike the rebound. This Dallas team is resilient. That's going to be a blocking foul. That'll be on Clarendon. You know, people knew that Dallas had a great deal of talent. I think it's safe to say it's come together, and not saying it's a complete project yet, it's come together quicker than most people thought. Yeah, I think Greg Bibb would disagree. He seems to feel, Greg Bibb, the GM of the Dallas Wings, he seems to feel this was a part of the plan all along to accumulate talent through the draft. 
They have so many top five, top six WNBA draft picks on this roster. Shot to Savile with a three. I mean, think about it. Since Greg's been here, five players drafted in the top five. Fruits of their labor right now. And we've got an offensive foul. We'll go the other way with it. And Dallas on a little bit of a run. We're going to see this opportunity here that is really a, a, a great call by the official. Lasia Clarendon's coming off of that ball screen, and the defender was moving and active as that screen came and hit her. Easy call for the official. Clarendon now with two personal fouls. Mabry out front. Step back over Nafisa Collier. No loose ball foul. And I think it's going to be on... Oh, it's going to be on Minnesota. Sylvia does not look like a happy camper right now. I, I don't see it. I don't understand it. I think they're calling it on Clarendon. It is. It'll be on Clarendon. And that'll be her third personal foul. So Carlton and Clarendon both with three for Minnesota. I think we were all looking at Sylvia Fowles. Arike. Oh, my! Okay, Arike. You can't back off of Arike when she's got that ball on the floor, especially at that three-point line. She's going to let it fly. Arike on the drive. Got it! Tied on Minnesota. This whole run of Dallas is started with saw two, saw three. She hit that three, and it just ignited the offense for the Dallas Wings, and it helped them play on that defensive end and create momentum like this attack down the lane. Players with a flair for the dramatic. Well, the Wings' Arike Ogunbowale showed us that June 6th in Seattle. Two, Ogunbowale with two, throws it up, and three goes! And how about the New York Liberty talented point guard Sabrina Unescu on opening night? Catch, shoot, four tenths of a second, they win it. You get a chance to see Sabrina coming up next on CBS Sports Network. The Liberty meet the Las Vegas Aces in the desert. We just checked a moment ago. Sabrina Unescu still questionable for that game. But boy, I tell you, boy, she's fun to watch. She is a lot of fun to watch. And it's interesting just the timing of when New York released Lasia Clarendon. And the, the the talk around the league was a big reason why they released Lasia because they felt so confident in a player like Sabrina. Yeah. And clearly, Sabrina's important to that roster, and I just love seeing the impact that Lasia Clarendon is having so quickly on the roster here with Minnesota. Coach Will Hopkins done a nice job. That's going to be a travel call against Minnesota. That'll be their ninth turnover of the ball game. In Dallas opening up this third quarter, flexing their muscles. 10-3 run. Started with Sobley, as you talked about, Coach. Now she'll direct traffic. Carlton on her into Enrique's hands with nine to shoot. I love seeing these two-man game opportunities that get created sometimes. And they get created with ball screen action, with Satu setting it for Enrique, and then it also gets created with one-on-one -on -one action with Satu sitting to Enrique's left or right. In particular, to her left is a really good alignment because where does Enrique like to attack? To her left. She's going to be best in that space. Satu's defender is going to have to help. Notre Dame on Notre Dame, and McBride Notre Dame got called for the foul. Shot clock at eight. Mariah with four. Jefferson, quick move, pull up jumper, in and out. Fouls with the rebound, that's number nine. One board away from a double-double. Minnesota missing an opportunity to find a piece as the rim runner, but they're gonna find Sylvia Fowles in that paint. Three defenders get engaged with Minnesota as they penetrate into that paint, but they haven't found the confidence from the three-point line to exploit it. There's the unicorn, gives it up. Arike, four, three! Arike with 10 in the third quarter. 
So this is what I'm talking about, those two-man games. And when you can find possessions where you've got Arike with on her left is Satu, on her right is Mabry, or now, or maybe you have Satu penetrating, and on her left is Arike and Mabry on the right. That is some big-time pressure on the defense to decide how they're right. going to attack into those spaces. Foul was on Mariah Jefferson. There's a foul again. Arike, four for four shooting so far here in quarter number three. Clarendon, way short. Wings with their first lead of the ball game at 46-45. Look, I think that foul that we just saw out of Dallas is one of those high IQ fouls. It stopped any kind of momentum situation and forced Minnesota to have to play in the half court, which led to that air ball. Wings much more aggressive defensively, really kicked things off at the beginning of the third. Offensively, more in sync. Uh, they were looking for Charlie Collier to cut down the paint. Rachel Batham, no. Collier pulls it down. She is going to be tied up. Best rebounders go after the ball high. They don't wait for it to come to right. their hands. They get their hands up to the ball, and then they rip it, they grip it, and they <laughs> don't let go of it. Pretty good jump ball again with Collier and Sylvia Fowles. Talk about the Wings defense. Vicki Johnson telling us defense is one thing, but having pride in your defense is another. And what does that really mean when you're out on the court? Here's what it means. It means that your activity level off the ball is always on a level 10. You're always talking and you're communicating right. and you're rotating and you're not giving up on plays and you believe every single shot is a miss and you're going to attack that glass. Fouls easily wins the tip into the hands of Collier, Clarendon. Dribble penetration, uses that left shoulder, draws the contact. Laisha will go to the line. We've seen Laisha Clarendon attack right down the middle of the tunnel, and that's the majority of where her best possessions have come from in this game. And they know it completely how to dissect and really cut up a defense. And the best way is you attack down right. the tunnel. You don't allow help side defense when you're attacking right down the middle. Howard Bengal, who writes for 538, had a great question earlier today on Azuma. By the way, if you read any of his articles, great insight into the WNBA, especially his latest one. But Astor said, you were the primary ball handler in 26-2017 with Atlanta. And he tried to draw the correlation. Now she's the primary ball handler here in Minnesota. Of course, that team's 2016-2017. They were fast-paced Atlanta to save the lane. Well, understand the position as well. Malaysia had the responsibility of knowing their entire offense overnight as a point guard. Play calls where not only she's supposed to go as we see a great deep catch and finish again by Minnesota and Nafisa Collier, but Malaysia had to know not just what she was supposed to do, but a good point guard knows what everybody's supposed to do and the timing of the sets as well. Enrique. Good defense by Collier. Charlie Collier, she rolls it over the front of the rim. Charlie Collier's first field goal tonight. The Wings regain the lead. Collier, last two games coming in today was five for five, and the three gives Minnesota the lead right back. Again is Kayla McBride, her third from beyond the arc. Timeout's going to be called by the Dallas Wings, and that's a defensive adjustment by Coach Vicki Johnson. Now she's saying she wants a full timeout as Minnesota takes the two-point advantage. Good, good timeout. Cheryl Reeves' team, of course, did not play well in their last game Tuesday against Chicago. Rob, we're going to take a look at this. It's a great pass, but here's the issue. you got to have three layers of vision with that ball. you got to know not just what's going on at that first layer defensively, but who's waiting at the rim. Right. So even if she had caught that ball, 
What was she going to do with it when you got one of the best interior defenders to ever play in the WNBA waiting on it? You know, you talk about all-time rebounder. That goes into the hands of Sylvia Fowles, but she broke the record held by now assistant coach for Minnesota, Rebecca Brunson. And, and I remember uh, calling that game and Rebecca saying, I was so honored that Sylvia was the one to break my record. Well, again, just look over at that Minnesota bench over there, and you've got Sylvia Fowles, number one, and then you've wow. got somebody coaching and helping the next layer of great players, Rebecca Brunson. And you got Tina Charles just stalking them. Yeah. She's ready to come after that, and I think she's got a number, another 200, 300 rebounds in her to be able to rise all the way to that number one spot before it's all said and done. How about one of my favorite players, Candace Dupree, and boy, she just keeps on trucking. Dallas with the basketball. Quick pull up, Arike knocks it down. Started the game, 0 for 4 shooting. It's 5 for 5 here in the third. Another way you can tell how much a team's bought in and how much they're growing is how they've come out of timeouts. And we're seeing Dallas tonight come out of timeouts as Leja Clarendon also finds a great score out of that timeout. But we're seeing them come out of timeouts, really producing some good momentum and possessions. Clarendon is just such a leader for this team. You can hear her talking defensively all the way up from where we're at. Harrison, nice move with a left shoulder. And we are tied at 52. Boy, Enrique, she was not going to allow Bantam to get any kind of an open look. I'd say that was disrupting and contesting <laughs> the pass. Yeah, I'd say so. People talk a lot about contesting shots. You got to contest passes. There's going to be way more passes than there are shots. So when you do that well, you're going to become really disruptive defensively. Alicia Clarendon going to take a seat. Nikki Johnson saying what's impressed her about Enrique, her dedication to defense this year. From the outside, danger field for three. Last two games coming into tonight, she was four of seven from beyond the arc. She's one of one so far tonight. Mallory needs some help. Gray, fouls picture up. Gray, step back, hold, didn't get it. Mallory, no. Foul's going to be called, and Bella will go to the line. We continue to see Dangerfield kind of get caught on the back side, having to box out a lot. And a lot of that's due to some of the switching protocols that they're doing defensively in their game plan. And nice job by Bella Allery taking advantage of just that little pocket of space and getting that second chance opportunity. Of course, your father Mark Allery played for Duke and also in the NBA. Last year, after graduating from Princeton, she had to finish up her thesis, and it was about Broadway shows in the 20s. I went, okay. <laughs> well. I'm going to brag a little bit about you know, there's not a lot of people that can say a father and a daughter played in the WNBA. And we have one of those on our coaching staff at TCU, Abby Elijahwan, right. whose father, Hakeem Elijahwan, played. And I'll tell you, that's a unique upbringing that is truly special for those women. And I think we're going to continue to see more and more of that as there's these men that are, have completely bought into the league and want their daughters playing and being a part of it. Enrique thought she had it. You know, talking to Bella too, just how much her father meant to her because they have a court in their backyard on the dribble penetration by McBride. And even last year during COVID shutdown and everything, they, they still work out together. And Mark has meant so much to his daughter and, and her whole family has for that matter. She's just a good person to talk to. Well, I'm a coach's kid, so I love hearing exactly. stories like that. What we're seeing is Minnesota kind of remembering what their game plan was. Enrique, that prayer won't both be answered. Gets her own rebound, rifles it back out. Shot clock reset to 15. Gray can't finish it out. These Great finishes, effort, though. Yeah, these finishes that they're not finding. We see 
Minnesota and Kayla McBride find her finish, and she gave us the and one, appropriately <laughs> called out. But what Minnesota's doing right now is going back to their game plan. They're pressuring. They're making Dallas speed out, and that's making Dallas miss some easy bunnies. That's getting Minnesota out to the open court and pushing that ball up. They're scoring in the first four or five seconds of the shot clock. Right. Dallas isn't able to get their defense set. When Minnesota has to play in the half court, we see turnovers go up. We see the congestion around sale fouls, and that's not going to lead to victories for Minnesota. McBride having a whale of a game. That's her 20th point so far tonight. McBride comes in averaging 12 points a contest. As mentioned, last three games, she was just 3 of 17. She's 6 of 8 so far this evening. This looks like the all-star McBride that we've exactly. seen before. And I think this is what a lot of the Minnesota fans and WNBA watchers have been looking for is who's going to be the other guard, the somebody that's mm -hmm. going to bring some more scoring punch for this Minnesota team. Rachel Bantam doesn't like the call. Satu Sabali kind of came flying out of the pack. Watch the right side of your screen on this replay. It's physical. Physical. <laughs> Little chicken wing there. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I kind of wish those weren't fouls, honestly. Like, you've got to have a physical presence. What else are you going to do in that situation? And you can see the entire bench arguing with the officials over there and yeah. I, I, if i were that official i'd kind of look down that sideline and say oh there's a championship there and there's a championship there and an mvp <laughs> exactly. there and leading rebounder there i think i'm gonna reverse my call <laughs> exactly Cheryl reeve doing an outstanding job of her substitution pattern again only nine players available for her you got to keep them fresh because this is a physical game. That'll hit off the leg of Dangerfield. Wings will have it. 14 to shoot. 64 seconds left to play in the third. And here's the thing about Cheryl Reed. She doesn't lose her stuff over a play like that because it's a hustle play. And she knows that kind of tempo and hustle is what they lacked against Chicago. They're going to get way more good out of plays like that in the course of a basketball game and they will back. Shot clock at four, tough shot, Harris, no. Harris had knocked it into the hands of Dangerfield with 45 to play here in the third. Dallas outscoring Minnesota 22-17 here in the third stanza. Dangerfield wide open. Thornton, nice job boxing out. Seven second difference shot of the game clock. Ty Harris will call the play out. Gray over fouls, can't get the three to go. Minnesota with the last opportunity to score here in the third. Rachel Bantam, no. Ball tip, trying to keep alive, not going to do it. Third quarter is in the books. The Wings trail by 13 at intermission. They've been able to cut that down. We'll head to the fourth and final stanza. Minnesota leading Dallas by five. Arike with 12 points tonight, extends her double digit scoring league, uh, which he's the active leader in that category to 49 games. You look at the scoring leaders, Tina Charles on top, 24 points a ball game. And when you talk about rebounding leaders, John Quell Jones on top, Brittany Griner, and there's Sylvia Fowles down at number five. Well, we can see absolutely that John Quell Jones is finding her way in nearly every category at the top. And you got to believe that she, as we talked about earlier on, that she's going to be, if not the leader in the MVP votes, one of the top. Aldemiris well, Dantas got loose, got it, by the way. Kayla McBride, new season high in points. Checking in with 20, it was 19 coming into tonight. Thornton tries to go baseline, good defense. Catch, shoot. 
Izzy Harrison fights for it. Last touch by five foot five Crystal Dangerfield. Dallas has gone to the lineup where they utilize Kayla Thornton in the post more than anybody else, and they really give her an opportunity to try to capitalize off of some mismatches. They don't have a true center in there. Izzy is not what I would call a true center. She's got the ability to swing from that 5-4 and guard multiple positions. Wings have taken the lead in the third quarter. Dangerfield has it knocked away. Good defense by Ty Harris. Charlie Collier will check back into the lineup for Dallas, and Izzy Harrison will go out. Vicki Johnson has got so many tools in her toolbox. It's just mixing and ma matching and finding that right combination. You got to love that as a coach. And again, that's what Greg Bibb talked about, that he really right. tried, to tried to build on this team as Bantam builds her stat sheet with another three. That's Bantam's second from beyond the arc tonight. It extends Minnesota's lead to 10. Wings trying to go to 500. And last touch by Dallas. It'll be Minnesota's basketball. Kind of a dangerous time now for Dallas. It is, and I, I'm noticing how active the bench for Minnesota is. The coaches, the players are standing up, and we've got to talk about the benches for a second, right. and not just in the productivity, but the alignment of the benches. This is evidence of things changing a little bit as the piece of Collier gets again right at the rim. But with the players are now lined up, sitting right next to each other, there's right. not all that space in between, and that creates a chemistry and a synergy, and you've got to believe Minnesota loves that coming out of kind of a rough start. They want to build that energy amongst each other. Uh, the scoop can't get it to go. Rebound pulled down by Dantas. Quickly up ahead, Gray with a pick. She looks to push it, has numbers if she hurries. Gray, tough shot, no. A lot of people say that's a bad shot, but Alicia Gray has a tendency of making those. And Demiris Dantas with the three. Her first from beyond the arc tonight. She makes it look just so easy. She gets her feet set nice and early. She's ready for those one extra passes and nails them. Minnesota on a 10-0 run. Seven minutes and 48 seconds left to play in the ball game. And we'll take a look at that last play. These are those possessions that when you're a stretch four, you love. The one more and a phantom in the corners, what creates the one more for Donald. We're here in quarter number four, Minnesota on a 10-0 run. Well, you know that Minnesota was going to come out with something to prove, and they had some pride they were playing for. They are moving the ball in the half-court fast. They're pushing it up in the 94 feet fast. They've got Dallas on skates right now. And Dallas played so well for the most part of quarter number three. Haven't been able to do that here in the fourth. Still a lot of time left, though. Marina Mabry. Collier, that's a tough cover outside a Enrique no. The tough thing about Enrique is that same shot she's hit twice in this game. Right. And there's times when they just don't fall, but it's one of her best shots. Jefferson on Dangerfield, scoop of the score. Enrique is one of those players that, again, when she can find a rhythm where she can kind of get that crossover and that bounce, it doesn't matter how much of a contest is there. She's got the rhythm. There's a good chance it's going in. Boy, Collier was using the arm to try to fend off the defense of Marina Mabry. A good defense by Mariah Jefferson a play ago. As the Wings look to try to break into this lead the last seven minutes of the game, they're going to need a lot more defensive stops like this. They're going to need to get out into passing lanes, make Phoenix, or Phoenix, sorry, make, <laughs> make the Lynx feel a lot more pressure and rushed in an uncomfortable way. They will give props to Phoenix. Bonnie Williams doing an incredible job. Oh, no kidding. For, former neighbor in San yeah. Antonio. One of the great guys in basketball. Arike. No, and she is fouled on the flag. Cheryl Reeve is coaching a storm up tonight. She doesn't like losing. No. And 
Cheryl Reeve is not a loser. She is mad at her defense right now that they didn't rotate over soon enough. You got to know that Enrique has the ball. She's going to try and score. So your entire off-ball defense needs to be flooded in her direction. Cheryl Reeve, of course, looking for win number 250 as head coach of Minnesota. They are wearing those officials out. <laughs> <laughs> She's got her whole she like-minded staff right yeah. there like every time there's a bad call all four of those women are up and ready to let them hear it i love it i'm here for it i just like tip green getting that little smile on his face during that last moment there as he was listening in well he knows them he's not taking yeah. it personally he gets that they, cheryl's got to get this team playing with more fire and energy and pride and Sometimes as a coach, you got to manufacture that with your body language and your own energy. Marina Mabry, pull-up jumper, still struggling, shooting the basketball tonight, now 0 for 7. Got a start after coming off the bench the last four. Look at these tiny point guards out there as we see Bo Jeff try to guard Nafisa in the paint. Good cover up by Caleb Thornton on Collier. Shot clock at five. Catch, shoot, throw. Loose ball foul. And I think it's going to be a Charlie Callier. And it will be. And Bella Allery will check back into the lineup for Dallas. How do you think, tell me how you think about the rotation where Dallas has these young, talented, long, versatile post players. And should they go with one and ride with them? Or do you like the fact that Vicki Johnson's out there getting them both opportunities to grow and investing in their future? Just a reminder, the New York Liberty and Las Vegas Aces, for those of you who are going to watch it here on CBS Sports Network, tip-off has been pushed to 10.07 Eastern Time. Again, push the tip to 10.07, and we'll get you to that game just as soon as this one ends. Enrique, no. Bella Allery, nice job. Enrique has missed her last first shot. Caleb Thornton stops the scoring drought. Ooh, that was a pretty possession. The ball didn't stay in anyone's hand more yeah. than a second. It was quick, click, click, click. Nice passing, and Minnesota didn't know what hit him. Thornton getting very physical with Collier. Shot clock at eight. Clarendon. Danger field over Jefferson. Boy, Marina Mabry was thrown to the ground, but that'll be a shot clock violation. Either that or Marina gets the Ricardo Montalban Fine School of Acting Award. You know what Minnesota's doing here, right? They're using the clock. They're understanding time and score. There's no point in rushing shots. They would right. rather see that shot clock violation than an early bad shot that puts Dallas into quick scoring opportunities. Jefferson. Enrique. Notre Dame against Notre Dame. Whistle and a foul. Boy, McBride was going to make it very difficult for Enrique to go around her. Enrique's got answers to that answer, though. She's yeah. a hard problem to solve for a lot of teams when you're going one-on-one. -on -one. But one of the things I think a lot of teams are starting to do is go ahead and let Enrique go off. But they're exactly. going to try and make sure other people don't go off because they know that the way she scores for the most part is one-on-one. -on -one. And we see just the hard fall that she gets. And it takes her a minute to get up, but she's going to be all right. Ten on the shot clock. Jefferson. Oh, what a rejection by Collier. And a timeout's going to be called by Minnesota. I'm not sure if Cheryl wanted to call that timeout. Now she's saying she wants a 20. And Bella Allery going to be slow to get up. Maybe an ankle injury. They're going to take, I'm not going to speculate, but it looked uh, from up here, she gave that left one quite a twist. Hopefully she's okay. And she's walking out under her own power, and that's a good sign. 
hustle plays have been Bella Allery's forte this year. Here it is again. It's the left ankle we're looking for. Oh, yeah, just kind of rolled it. There is no just kind of. I know. You either do it or you don't. When you've done it once, that you just, I can't even watch him. I have my <laughs> monitor covered up with my, my papers. I can't stand seeing it. If you sprained your ankle, I know you're feeling me right now. I yep. don't want to see someone do it. I understand why we show them. Yeah, yeah. Again, makes good TV, but man. Five years together, I have never seen you look at an ankle. I can't. I, I would don't throw up, up right here. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't make good TV. <laughs> no, it doesn't. 429 to play in the ball game. Wings find themselves down by 14. They trail by as many as 16. Their biggest lead was one. That came in the third quarter. Good ball movement, Minnesota with nine to shoot. Clarendon sees a little gap rejected. Izzy Harrison swats it away. Arike on the penetration, counted. Will that spark him? That's great basketball. You needed more of that as you were fit opening the fourth quarter. That kind of activity off the ball and just finding a way to stop plays. You see this here, Izzy. She understood the timing that was going to be necessary. When yeah. you're a long player like that, trying to change the shot of a smaller player, the key is, is block it after it leaves her hands. Don't try to come down and block it while Good it's point. in their hands. That's too easy of a foul call for an official. Foul was on Arike. That was her first foul inside of four to play. Fouls, great penetration deep, lost the handle. She walked with it, will go the other way with 3.48 left. It was going to be a travel or a three-second call. She set yeah. the ball screen, rolled, posted, got the high-low seal, put the ball on the floor. She was in there too long. It was going to have to be something. Can the wings take advantage? Ogumboale, Jefferson, Gray, Thornton, and Harrison on the floor. McBride's been doing all that she can to try to avoid yeah. Arike getting the ball. And honestly, that's the best way you can defend Arike one-on-one -on -one is off the ball, empty out, prevent her from getting her touches, and don't let her get her touches towed up to that three-point line. She's got to get it out near logo, half-court logo space to have some luck of keeping it out of uh, her scoring range. McBride with three personal fouls, both teams with three team fouls. Great, tough shot over fouls. Foul swipes at it into the hands of Clarendon. As McBride trailing, lost it. Here comes Dallas looking to push it again. That's kind of on Clarendon's defense. Oh my! To have told him that people were coming. That's a wolf call. And Arike lost it right into the hands of McBride. Knew she would have the breakaway, so she grabbed him. Now the officials are going to talk about it. They're going to look at the replay. Yeah, they're going to they're going to have to take a look at that. Yeah, I think it'll be an easy call for the officials. Yeah, there was nothing but daylight for Kayla McBride. And that was just a fluke thing off the hands of Arike. A big story in that first half, the bench points of Dallas. They had 24 points. But in the second half, they've only gotten six as we look at that last sequence again. We've talked about using your fouls well before, and I, I've mentioned and uh, tipped my hat to Sue Bird. She's the best at utilizing oh, yeah. her fouls and not allowing teams to be able to get those kind of fast break layups. But the key is to know that you got to make a play at the ball. Right. You can't just grab a jersey, grab a waist, especially with a clear pass. Quick update on the league tonight. Seattle beat Indiana 79-69. Washington came from behind to beat Atlanta 96-93. And Chicago leading Connecticut by six with 4.58 to play. Just a reminder, the New York Liberty Las Vegas Aces, that'll be coming up right here on CBS Sports Network. Game time push to 10.07 Eastern time. I think seeing that Indiana played Seattle just to 10 points yeah. It's got to be something that 
Indiana has, needs to feel good about. They have struggled this season getting things rolling. Now they're saying it's just a common foul, which for Dallas, that's good news. Indiana just 1 in 13 so far this season. You know, it's interesting talking to some of the Minnesota people today. They're looking at, because these two teams play against Saturday night, 7 o'clock, right here on the same court. They're looking at this two game set as almost like a playoff series. I thought it was an interesting concept playing them back, playing a team back to back. There's a lot of that going on in the league, and it's almost like a mini playoff that's yeah. happening. Collier, tough shot. That's pretty. Wow, she is so good. Started every game of her career, the second year pro out of UConn. Third year pro out of UConn. I liked her accolade in the preseason when the GMs do their survey votes, and she was a voted most underrated player in the league. And I think that is perfectly said about her. Well, the piece of Collier picks up the, uh, the foul. That is her third personal foul. So with 2.53 to play, Enrique Ogabawale trying to bring the wings back on a comeback, but they trail by 14. Along with TCU head women's basketball coach and former WNBA player Reagan Peebley, I'm Ron Thule. Good to have you with us tonight from Dallas, where Minnesota leads 77-63 over the Dallas wings. Minnesota has won three straight over Dallas. In fact, the last Dallas win came June 30th, 2019. Plenty of time left, but Wings need some offense and a couple of stops. There's those long defensive arms of still. She's going to really make teams have to change how they get those post entries in. Well, that was not shot clock awareness by the Dallas Wings. You got to score quick being down 13 with just two and a half minutes left. You can't waste too much time. And a shot clock violation again, another empty possession. And when you're down by 14, you ill can afford those. Here is Collier out front. So steady tonight. Clarendon tries to dish it. Last touch by the wings. Nine on the shot clock for Minnesota. You know, I uh, am really proud of myself that I've been so complimentary of Nafisa Collier. She is from my rival high school. <laughs> she went to Incarnate Word High School. She's from the same town, grew up in the same town as Maya Moore in Jeff City, Missouri. And uh, I was a visitation B vet back in the day. A what? A visitation B vet. Don't ask what it is. I'm not going to ask. It is. That was our mascot. And uh, we had some big time battles with Incarnate Word. Oh, that's funny. Cheryl Reeve calls the piece of Kyle, you're a top 10 player in the league for good reason. I think that's current, but I yeah. can only imagine what she's going to become. Oh. I, I don't think it's out of question that we'll see uh, Nafisa be the in the feet. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's good. That's another good one. <laughs> That's about three tonight. You know, I, I like. I talked to Gino Ariem, her uh, her college coach from UConn, after she got drafted, and he said to me she went to the perfect team. He said she was consistent. She doesn't waste time or energy, and knows exactly where she wants the ball. And he also credited Cheryl Reeve in just doing an incredible job in how she scouts players. He said oh, yeah. she doesn't just look at the surface stuff. She looks at players to try and do a, what she calls plug and play. She wants to be able to just pluck them right into what they do and be great fits for Minnesota, not just great talent out of college. 18-point advantage. Minnesota has had an outstanding fourth quarter, outscoring the Wings 21 to 8, make it 21 to 11. But Enrique was 16 in the ball game. Wings with three players in double figures. Savali and Thornton with 10. Enrique was 16, extending her double-digit streak of scoring to 49 straight games. 
Clarendon with three. Nice ball fake. Mabry got a hand on it, knocked it away. You won't see Marina Mabry go 0 for 7 very often. From you the won't. Court. But I think, that, again, that was part of Minnesota's game plan. They extended yeah. their defense, applied some pressure, and really tried to rush the guards of Dallas. And it's worked. Enrique on the drive. She'll have an easy layup with 68 seconds to play. Enrique closing in on 20 points. Eight of her 11 games coming into tonight, she had eclipsed the 20 point mark. McBride, no. Again, these two teams meet 7 o'clock on Saturday. Count it for Alicia Gray. Not quitting. You got to hand them that. No, they won't quit. Vicki Johnson won't let them quit, and she's going to keep imploring that they play some defense and get out and run. It's important in games like this that play teams know how you finish is a lot of times how you go into that next practice or that next game. And as we talked about, they're going to see this team with a quick turnaround, and they've got to make sure that they're continuing to find some little things that they might be able to see in film that will help them be able to put together a game plan that leads to a victory on Saturday. Well, Minnesota has got to win on the road because coming into tonight, now it's nine of their next 12 games are away from Minneapolis. You got to win on the road. And Vicki uh, Johnson was talking to us yesterday, said, you know, you, you want to split your road trips and then protect your home court. And unfortunately, Wings aren't going to protect their home court tonight, barring uh, an incredible miracle. Some people might want to criticize Cheryl Reeve and say, well, you know, why aren't you playing more of your bench right now? End of the game, rest still. But as you mentioned earlier, Ron, she doesn't have a lot of bench. She's got four players, and that is it to be able to rotate in. And every single season, she tries to find more rest for Syl. But Syl wants to be out there, and she knows they are flat out better when Sylvia Fowles is on the floor. It's here, Bird is checked into the lineup, number 22. Had her first practice yesterday, signed on June 15th because of the injuries. Don't forget, Las Vegas coming up against the New York Liberty. That'll be coming up. Tip-off will be 10.07 Eastern time, and in 29.9 seconds, we'll get it over to Enrique. Rolls it over the front of the rim, and she's got 20. And one second different shot of the game clock. McBride, a new season high, 22 points tonight. Collier with 19 points, eight rebounds. Sylvia fouls, 14 and 12. And a whistle and a foul. And it's like, really? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. It's just unnecessary. And I think that's the competitiveness, though, that yeah. is coming out. And Alicia Gray is not thinking that this is the last nine seconds of the game. She's thinking, I'm going to try to make sure I make a play yeah. right here. And you, you'd much rather have to deal with that than offense. I want to give kudos to Sylvia Fowles. This is her 170th double-double number one in the WNBA. That's an incredible feat. Yeah, say that again for everyone in the back row. double-doubles. Wow. She's underrated. It, it, it's undervalued and underappreciated, not by the fans and the right. Minnesota organization, but I think just in general, she is one of the best. That's going to do it. 85-73 is going to be the final. Minnesota defeating the Dallas Wings. Wings and Lynx will play again Saturday night, 7 p.m. on Valley Sports Southwest. So for Reagan Peebley and our entire crew, I'm Rob Doolin saying so long from Arlington. We're coming up next. We'll take our CBS Sports Network viewers to Las Vegas as the Aces host the New York Liberty.